Tonight, preparing for protests. A week out from the presidential inauguration and officials are warning of protests in all 50 states. Plus, the state of the state. After a difficult 2020, Wisconsin's governor is addressing key issues, including the pandemic. And some restaurant owners in Minnesota say they have nowhere to turn after financial help from the state stopped. From CBS3 Duluth, this is the CBS3 News at 6. Good evening, I'm Kristen Bakke. Thanks for joining us tonight. Today, Minnesota's Attorney General Keith Ellison commented on the state's preparations for possible riots next week on Inauguration Day. The interview aired this morning on CNN. CBS3's John Cardinelli has more on what the Attorney General had to say. Ellison cited the riots last Wednesday as very concerning. He says the people who plan to riot and can't make it to Washington next week will make their point made locally. Ellison says what happened last week at the Minnesota Capitol and governor's home is an example of that. You'll remember a mob of rioters bullhorned Governor Tim Walz's home. They vocally made threats, chanting things like, we're going to come for you and we are going to do things we don't want to do. Walls and his family were eventually evacuated from the governor's mansion. Ellison also referenced the threats to kidnap Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer last month as another reason as to why the state is not letting their guard down come next week. We're coordinating with our federal partners and internally. Uh, we are uh, preparing and making sure uh, that these insurrectionists, that these uh, lawless individuals do, are not able to hold sway. We are stepping up, coordinating and uh, preparing. And I think we'll be ready. And on your screen right now, here's some proof of the preparations. This video was taken recently. You can see fencing and barricades already being put up around the Minnesota Capitol. Ellison was also asked about moving forward with impeaching President Donald Trump after last week's unrest. He says it would be a signal to the American people that these actions are not tolerated. Thanks, John. Well, despite the heightened security, Minnesota's governor is traveling the state this week calling for peace. Governor Tim Walz plans to tour American history monuments across Minnesota while calling for reflection, civility, and peace. The Democrat kicked things off today at the Minnesota History Center in St. Paul. Walz's message encouraged people to debate rather than deface. Uh, I think it's important for Minnesotans to think about and be reflective in this time, um, have civility dominate, and peaceful conversation and debate be the heart of that. One of Walz's stops on this tour will be Thursday afternoon at Duluth's Soldiers and Sailors Monument outside of City Hall. The monument recognizes people from St. Louis County who have served in American conflicts, including the Civil War. A Wisconsin man who posted on Facebook that he was among those wanted for illegally entering the U.S. Capitol during last week's riot has been arrested in Eau Claire. Kevin Daniel Loftus is facing federal charges. He's expected to appear in court today, but authorities have not said exactly what he could be charged with. Pictures posted online allegedly show Loftus holding an American flag and smiling inside the Capitol. Wisconsin court records show Loftus was a resident of Chippewa Falls in 2019. It's not immediately clear if he still calls the city home. We'll continue to follow this story and update you as we learn more. Here's a live look at the Wisconsin State Capitol, where Governor Tony Evers will deliver his State of the State address tonight in just under an hour. The virtual speech starts at 7. You can watch along on our CBS3 website or Facebook page. Ahead of the address, Evers, a Democrat, said he chose to deliver the speech virtually to follow along with his messaging during the pandemic. Evers is sure to touch on COVID-19's impact on the state, its residents, and businesses. We're also expecting an update on vaccination efforts. Tonight's State of the State comes as armed protests are being planned at all 50 state capitals until at least Inauguration Day. Dave's here now for a quick look at the weather. Dave, I cannot believe how quickly the snow in my yard is dwindling. It's going pretty fast. Yeah, snow fans aren't too happy about that. Luckily for them, and maybe not so lucky for others, 
We are going to cool down and we'll get some fresh snowfall in just a, a day or so. But let's talk about those high temps Kristen was mentioning here. Yeah, the normal high temps around 19 and today's round made it from say 28 in Ely, 27 up the Gunflint to as warm as 32 degrees around Ironwood and Moose Lake, Big Fork, Grand Rapids. 35. Warmer than normal will be with us probably through Friday. Then temperatures will start to cool back to normal for the weekend. And one of the reasons is the cloudy sky we have right now will be backed up by a fresh low pressure system by as early as tomorrow night, which brings us a 60% chance for snow for Thursday and for Friday. And I'm thinking right now, three to six inches of fresh snow is possible during that two day period. It might start in Minnesota by Wednesday night, but much of Wednesday will be a day where we can gird our loins and set the stage because it'll be mostly cloudy but dry, still warmer than normal at 35. Once we get into Saturday and it cools back down to normal, We'll talk about how long that trend in turn will last. Thanks, Dave. The Moderna vaccine appears to give people at least a year's worth of protection from COVID-19. That's according to the biotechnology company's chief medical officer. Vaccines from Moderna and Pfizer were both granted emergency use authorization from the FDA. According to the company, Moderna will test to see if a third dose of the vaccine will result in longer protection. The two needed doses of the vaccine are given about a month apart. St. Louis County health leaders say they're happy with their COVID-19 vaccination efforts so far, but they face some challenges along the way and they anticipate more. So far, the county's public health team has administered 800 vaccines to EMS workers. That number does not include vaccination totals from any of the county's hospitals or pharmacies. When you add up all of those groups, 8,000 doses have been administered. County health leaders didn't say if they're meeting their projected distribution timeline, but they did say EMS workers' non-traditional shifts have made scheduling with this priority group a challenge. For now, the county is keeping up with vaccination staffing demands, but they anticipate a greater need when the vaccine is available to more people. The county has requested volunteers from a group called Minnesota Responds. Once a vaccine becomes more widely available, the county plans to transition testing sites into vaccination clinics. Meanwhile, Itasca County, they've vaccinated nearly all hospital and EMS workers there. Both skilled nursing and assisted living facilities are up later this week. Itasca County leaders say older adults and those at high risk will be vaccinated soon. You'll get a notification from your primary health provider when it's your turn. Financial help from the state has been many small businesses only lifeline during the pandemic. But now Minnesota has changed who qualifies for that help, leaving some restaurant and bar owners with nowhere to turn. CBS 3's Emma Quinn explains why those owners are calling on state and even federal lawmakers for help. The latest COVID-19 relief bill passed by Minnesota legislators in December changed the requirements that bars and restaurants have to meet in order to receive state financial help. And small restaurants like the Locker Room Bar and Grill and Colder Rain say they're seeing those impacts. The new relief bill states only restaurants and bars that lost 30% or more in sales taxes between April and September qualify for financial help. The Locker Room Bar and Grill owner Ron Mackey says he was never told about the new requirements, so when he learned he didn't qualify with a sales tax loss at 27%, it was crushing. Some of these places that have a $300,000 profit, they can take a 30% hit on sales. Um, someone like us with a $50,000 profit, a 30% drop in sales is crushing. Lawmakers said they made the change to make sure money was going to local businesses that need it and not larger chain restaurants that didn't struggle as much. Mackey, who's owned the restaurant for 23 years, says he had to lay off half of his 13 employees. Mackey reopened his dining room yesterday. He said he and his staff will do their best to make up what they lost this year. He didn't have exact totals for us on what that number might be. Coming up at 10, we'll hear from other local restaurants that have found themselves in the same boat and reaction from state leaders about their thoughts. While acknowledging the challenges of 2020, today Duluth Mayor Emily Larson pointed out the city's business wins during the year that was. One being the closing deal on the Costco project. She made the comments during the Duluth Area Chamber of Commerce's virtual meeting today. Larson said having Costco in Duluth versus a neighboring town will bring benefits, including sales tax revenue and local job creation.
Costco had to, did not have experience working with project labor agreements and working with community benefit agreements, both of which are absolutely imperative if you're working with the city of Duluth under my tenure. Chamber President David Ross echoed Larson's support for the Costco project. The retail store is still under construction off Arrowhead Road. During today's meeting, Larson also highlighted the city's advancements in affordable housing, support for businesses through the pandemic, and handling record numbers of unemployment applications. She thanked the business community for embracing the challenges of 2020. A former Minneapolis police officer who held his knee on George Floyd's neck will be tried alone. Court documents show Derek Chauvin will be tried separate from the other three officers charged. Chauvin's trial is set for March. A trial for the other three officers will be held in the summertime. The judge said if all four were tried together, social distancing in the courtroom would be impossible. Chauvin is charged with second-degree murder and second-degree manslaughter. The other three former officers are charged with aiding and abetting. Still to come on Live Local CBS 3, a West Duluth company will soon be expanding what they hope to achieve with the new space. Next. Today's record high is 45 from 1987. Tomorrow we could go towards 35 degrees, and by the weekend, cooler temperatures will prevail back towards normal. And of course, in between, we've got a chance for some snow to come around. We'll talk about the odds coming up after our break. For coverage that matters most to you, tune to CBS3. Enjoy! Get any size Dr. Pepper for one buck or a tasty sausage McMuffin with egg, two for four bucks. When facing a major health care decision, it's wise to seek a second opinion from a team of established experts. Financial decisions deserve the same level of care and expertise. At MPPL Financial, we develop your plan by assembling a personalized team that includes experts in multiple disciplines. So the result is a coordinated care plan that covers all areas of your financial life. Your outcome depends on the quality of care you receive. Call today to set up your free second opinion consultation or visit MPPLfinancial.com. Hello, I'm Mike Lindell, and as you know, my passion is to help each and every one of you get the best sleep of your life. That's why I created my new Giza Dreams bed sheets, 21-inch wide pillowcases that will fit over any pillow and deep pocket sheets that will fit over any mattress. You'll never want to sleep on anything else. Call or go online now to take advantage of Mike's Christmas special. Use your promo code, and for a limited time, when you buy one set of sheets, you'll get another set absolutely free. Order now. Everything that happens on a day-to-day -day basis in terms of news, no matter what happens in news, weather is always constant, weather is always changing as well, so it's still an important role as the meteorologist to kind of still stay grounded and to kind of just know that role and what to take and kind of just make sure you're delivering what's the most important for your viewers, but then also I like to touch base on the national things. All of those news stories also tie in with weather stories because they do go kind of hand in hand. Watch Jenna and Caitlin in the morning at 5 and 6 a.m. ready always there visit nationalguard.com to find out more enjoy get any size dr pepper for one buck or a tasty sausage mcmuffin with egg two for four bucks it is the question that matters the most Donde esta? that takes you behind the story robert it drives everything we do it is the foundation of trust who did all and the truth that propels us forward. What did you make of that? It is the question. One word, three letters long. And without it, our purpose, that's news, and our freedom fade. This is why. Join us weeknights for Live at 5 as we go around the Northland city by city. CBS 3 Weather is brought to you by St. Luke's. Now, the CBS3 Duluth WeatherMax forecast with meteorologist Dave Anderson. 
Well, like Kristen mentioned, the snow's starting to get a little bit thin in a few towns, and we really had to hold our horses and wait patiently to get what we've already got. So if you're a snow fan, you love winter sports, we need a little more snow, and I think a little more snow is coming. And that's going to change up the scenes here, like this live look at what's going on in downtown Ely right now, where Sheridan Street is clean and dry. By tomorrow night, snow may start coming down, and by Friday night, it may start to end. And I'll talk about how much could come in between coming up in just a bit. But right now, we look at the current conditions coming in from Duluth International Airport. It's 81% for the relative humidity, 26 for the current temp. Southwest wind, 9 miles per hour. Air pressure, 1,010 millibars, just a hair on the lower side. So not low enough for snow, but low enough for cloud cover to be up above us tonight. Current temperatures in the Upper Peninsula go from 27 to 29 degrees from Watersmeet to Ironwood. And in the uh, northern parts of Wisconsin, we go from 24 in Hayward to 28 in Superior to 31 towards Bayfield. Northern Minnesota numbers, well, we're looking at 34 towards Grand Marais, mid to upper 20s for much of the rest of the North Shore, mid 20s east central Minnesota, and the Iron Ranges are in the 20s as well. Low temps tonight likely will be in the teens to about 20 or so. Warmer than normal again, like things have been for oh so long. And they've been cloudier than normal for a long time as well. But that's probably going to be changing. The clouds are still with us here tonight. We're looking for a mostly cloudy sky from the UP through Wisconsin into Minnesota. But again, by tomorrow night, we could start to see some snow finally come from those clouds. As this wheat trough leaves, the clouds linger and a new low pressure system starts to ease its way towards us out of the Rockies, through the plains, and towards our region. So Wednesday night in Minnesota, 40% chance the snow could begin. May last, or the folks in Wisconsin and the UP may have to wait a little bit longer. Then getting into Thursday and Friday, it turns into a 60% snow chance for all zones. And by the time it wraps up on Friday night, I'm thinking three to six inches is the range that we're going to be getting, about one to three here for each day. And then once we get into the weekend, it will cool down, which is awfully common behind a low pressure system, but it won't be a drastic cool down. We'll show you how far with the seven day. Tonight, we start with Minnesota's forecast, which goes 16 to 23 with a mostly cloudy sky. Mostly cloudy sky goes across Wisconsin and Michigan there as well. And the low temps will be warmer than normal, 19 to 21, above zero. Sometimes in January, you have to throw in above or below. Well, tomorrow, partly sunny sky may affect Wisconsin and Michigan for some hours in the afternoon, with highs in the mid to upper 30s. That's from the warm front leading the low pressure system. In Minnesota, the front could make it mostly cloudy most of the day, with high temps roughly in the mid 30s there. And so, as far as the snow goes, again, for Minnesota, it could kick up. Wednesday night then becomes a 60% chance for everybody on Thursday, remains a 60% chance for everybody on Friday, and the latest model that I trust the most still says 1 to 3 inches both of the days. Uh, that's up from maybe 1 to 2 from last night. So we're nudging this up a little bit here. Bottom line is 3 to 6 by Friday night. And then Saturday. Sure, we start to cool down a little bit, Kristen, but not really badly. 19 degrees is the normal high temp, and that's what we get for Sunday and for Monday. Overnight low temps are usually around 1 above, and we get about 6 to 8 above during that period. So on MLK Junior Day here on Monday, it won't be as bitterly cold as it often is. Yeah, it, traditionally it is quite cold on Martin mm -hmm. Luther King Day. I know a lot of people who will be very excited if we get that snow on Thursday and Friday this week. Yeah, I do too. So. Yeah. Got the fingers crossed. We'll yes. see what happens. All right. Thanks, Dave. Soon there will be a new play space for children in Duluth and even a little something for the parents. Little Nature's, a children's retail store in West Duluth, is expanding. Right now the shop has a clothing storefront with a small children's play space, but after much support, the owners saw the need for a bigger location. The new space will be located on Superior Street in the Lincoln Park neighborhood. They will be keeping the retail side, but will be making the play space three times bigger. It will also have a cafe for parents to enjoy, a birthday party room, and even some parenting classes. Sign language for kids and, and infants, um, music, um, even just the basics of helping give some tools for parenting um, if parents are struggling so they can have a group where they can get support and feel like I'm not the only one that's struggling as a parent. The new location is set to open this summer. 
Minnesota Power is aiming to deliver 100% carbon-free energy to customers by the year 2050. The company announced the goal this morning after recently reaching the 50% mark. In its upcoming plan, Minnesota Power hopes to expand its wind and solar resources and achieve coal-free operations at its facilities by 2035. The plan will be submitted to the Minnesota Public Utilities Commission on February 1st. Coming up in sports, we are just a few days away from the start of high school hockey in the Northland. Kelly is in with a preview from Hermantown. Next. CBS3 live cams are brought to you by Kohler Chevrolet Buick GMC Cadillac. You're not just getting a car, you're getting Kohler. This winter, beat the cold with an up north hat. Michigan made. These warm hats are expertly stitched with soft fabric, perfect for protecting you from whatever Mother Nature throws your way. Visit our website today at upnorthhats.com. What does it mean to be a community bank? It means we've been family owned for four generations. It means we know our customers in our community because we live, work, and raise our families here. It means we're responsive to our customers' needs because we make our financial decisions locally. It means a dollar deposited in our bank stays in our community and helps support Northland organizations and projects. At North Shore Bank, we're dedicated to being your community bank for generations to come. Hi, I'm Steve Little, owner of Your Home Improvement Company. 2020 was an unbelievable year for all of us. As a family owned and operated business, we have been doing our best to stay focused on you this past year with our zero interest and zero payments until 2022 program. Thank you for allowing us to assist you in updating your most lived in asset during this difficult time, your home. From all of us at your home improvement company, Bath Planet and my family to yours, have a healthy, happy and safe new year. When you watch CBS 3, we have local elected officials inside. You receive detailed and up to date information. You heard local reaction. To do something for the people. For news that matters most to you. Continue watching live, local, CBS. Mariah Haberman here from Discover Wisconsin. Join me and the rest of the crew every week on this station for all things Wisconsin. Continue the adventure on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and discoverwisconsin.com. Plus, subscribe to The Cabin Podcast, available wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. Skilled trade workers are the backbone of every community and also the Army National Guard. Soldiers get paid training to keep the power flowing, engines running, and supplies moving. Army National Guard soldiers are learning skills that can set them up for success with companies looking to hire the best. The Army National Guard basically built my resume for me. Find out how you can learn a trade and serve part-time for your community and country by visiting NationalGuard.com. This year has been just a huge year. We've had everything going on with the pandemic. It's hard to not have your heart go out to those people, the millions that have been impacted by that. That's why we do what we do, you know, to try and keep people in the know. What's going on with this? When is it gonna end? When's the vaccine gonna be here? How is this impacting you? Where are resources to help you get through the pandemic and keep you and your family safe through all of this? For coverage that matters most to you, tune to live local CBS3. Welcome to the Kelly Clarkson Show! Now, CBS 3 Sports with Kelly Hinson. Well, we are just two days away from the start of the winter sports season. Here in the state of Minnesota, teams are going through their final run-throughs during practice before they get to return to action in just 48 hours. That includes the Hermantown boys hockey team. They made it the, the deepest run out of all the Northland boys hockey teams last season, making it to the state final game. Of course, they lost in that heartbreaking overtime to Matamidi, which coaches say those that are returning to this year's team are using as motivation. These guys are motivated, really motivated, especially that senior group. Uh, Joey and the boys, like, they want to get back there. They're motivated to... Um, try to get a four state championship for sure and that's a goal every year is to um, get down to the axe and try to win a championship. 
Despite only having 10 days to prepare and practice for the upcoming season, many of the players have taken advantage of the amount of outdoor rinks Herman Town has for them to use. We were able to be outside skating a lot before uh, we could be inside here. And that was great, but these last 10 or week has been uh, definitely good for us just to be back together inside as a team all again on the ice. The Hermantown boys will open up their season on Thursday night across the bridge against Superior. And high school hockey on my nine is coming, but note a few schedule changes that we'll see early in this season. First game is this Thursday at 7 p.m. as Cloquet hosts the Grand Rapids boys hockey team. Note the time change from Saturday's game, Duluth East and Cloquet, which will now start at 7.30 p.m. And of course, for a full list of games and start times, you can head to our website, cbs3duluth.com. Click on the sports tab, all times and games are subject to change, as is everything in this day and age. Well, the NBA and the NBA Players Association today announced an agreement on additional measures to supplement current health and safety protocols as the COVID-19 pandemic continues. The increased safety, me safety measures come as coronavirus cases surge across the country and during an uptick of NBA teams requiring potential player quarantines. For at least the next two weeks, NBA players and team staff are required to remain at their homes when the team is in their home market at all times except to attend team-related activities at the team facility or arena, exercise outside, or perform essential activities, or as a result of extraordinary circumstances. Away from work, interactions are limited to those with household members, family, and any personal staff working regularly in their home. And when on the road, players and team staff are prohibited from leaving their hotel other than for emergencies or team activities or interacting with non-team guests at the hotel. And that's all good and dandy. I just how do you regulate that? <laughs> do you call, like, is Rudy Gobert and uh, Ricky Rubio, are they getting calls every night? Like, are you in your home? They're doing uh, room checks, room I'm checks. sure. Yeah, that's what they do in high school when you go to the state tournament. They do room checks. Make high school sure basketball? You're... National Basketball Association. <laughs> Basically the here's, same thing. Here's my thoughts. If they want to play, they should follow the rules, right? And then we can play, the fans can enjoy it, everyone wins. Listen to Kristen, everybody. <laughs> Stay home, wear a mask, and listen to the rules. <laughs> Thanks, Kelly. Yeah. Many first, uh, local first responders have started to receive their second dose of the COVID-19 vaccine. Tonight on the CBS3 News at 10, we hear from a local nurse who is speaking out about her experience with the vaccine and how she hopes her story will stop the spread of misinformation when the vaccine becomes available to the public. Who is Erin Rogers? That question can now be followed. How'd I do, uh, how'd I do on that? Beautiful. Followed by the answer, Jeopardy host. The Green Bay quarterback will be filling in on an upcoming episode. After late host Alex Trebek's final episode aired Friday, the popular game show has been trying out new people in the role. No word on when Roger's episode will air. He once appeared on a celebrity episode of Jeopardy and has been a fan of the show since he was a kid. Dave, you need to be the host of Jeopardy. We watch it before the five, and you always get the answer right. Oh, thanks, sir, for saying that. You're welcome. <laughs> and forgetting that I get it wrong once in a while, like <laughs> the weather. Here's a quick look at our seven-day forecast. Snow possible Thursday, Friday. I'm thinking three to six inches for both days. Thanks for joining us. See you at 10. Change the future of medicine.